What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the Phillies Hosta video cast. The Phillies were swept out by the Miami Marlins today. Uh, final score of six to four. As they have now dropped their seventh straight game. Uh, they have not gotten a, week, a win in over a week. Their last win was last Saturday against the Atlanta Braves. They've got now swept out two series in a row by the Miami Marlins. Miami Marlins, the worst team in baseball. They were swept out by the Miami Marlins. Miami Marlins. The worst team in baseball, by the way. The worst team in baseball, keep in mind. The worst team in baseball. And you're swept out by them at home. It's even worse. At home. Not to mention you just swept – out by Washington. Not that's not to mention the fact, right? It's ridiculous. This team needs to wake up. And people say it's not Kapler's fault. The people that keep saying that needs to shut up. That is not true. It is his fault. Not everything is his fault, but some of it is his fault. Because people need to be quiet and understand that that is not the case. Some of it, a lot of it's his fault. Now, that bad bullpen decision yesterday when he decided to bring him Adam Morgan and Ramos was Rob Thompson's decision. That's the bench coach, Rob Thompson. That was his decision. That was not Gabe Kapler's decision. So I do not blame Gabe Kapler for that. And how can you really blame Rob Thompson? He's a bench coach. He's not – obviously, I know the bench coach is kind of like – kind of like the assistant manager, right? Like he's like the, you know, manager 2.0. Uh, so, but you can't really bring, blame Rob Thompson for that as much, but it's, he does deserve some of the blame. I'm not going to say that he did nothing wrong. I mean, he shouldn't have blown an Adam Morgan in that position, come, just coming back from the D, uh, I.O. and you're going to put him in that kind of situation? Eh, not smart. Uh, especially when it's some kind of a must-win game, right? Uh, and the Phillies now dropped their seventh straight. It just blows, blows my mind how we lost to the worst team in baseball. I just don't understand. How, how do you lose to the worst team in baseball? How do you get swept out by the worst team in baseball? And the Phillies welcome the New York Mets to town in a four-game series. Two teams that are struggling badly. The Mets are struggling badly. The Phillies are struggling badly. Two teams that have totally underachieved this year, who are much, much better. And then, you know, then on paper, right? The Mets are a good team on paper. The Phillies are a good team on paper. And the two teams have not done well this year. They have not done well this year. Now, I was laughing at the Mets. I have a friend who's a Mets fan. Um, and I was laughing at the Mets a while and, you know, saying how bad they were. I was happy. But I, I can't – I'm not really laughing at them right now because we're playing like garbage too. I don't think it's funny. So, I mean, obviously we start playing better and then we all laugh about the Mets and the Nationals again. But right now I don't think it's very funny. I mean, because we're in the same position. So, we welcome them to town uh, tomorrow night, 7 to 5. So, let's get right into the scoring. It's Darlin Castro, singles. It was originally 2 nothing, but they over, they challenged the call and it made it 1 nothing. So, and then Gene Segura, bottom of the first inning, he singled on a line drive to the left field. Harper, who walked, came around the score and so did Hoskins. And Scott Kingery made it to second, 2 1 Phillies. Bop at a second. JT Riddle hits a home run. <sighs> Two run home run the right field. Uh, yet again, the second straight night he's homered. I mean, he, these are no name people. It's not like we're eyeing home run to Christian Yelich, Cody Bellinger, uh, Mike Trout. I mean, these are no name people. We allowed a home run to a guy yesterday who hadn't played a game in over 10 years, a major league baseball game. I mean, that's, like, that's sad. I mean, much as I want to say I'm happy for him because, you know, that is, I mean, that, I mean that's a lot. Uh, much as I want to say I'm happy for him, I'm really like, I, I just, I can't because it was against us. So, anyway, and then Brian Anderson got into a double play. And then another run score. Ramirez can run the score. Four to two Marlins. Garrett Cooper, sing, uh, homers to center field. Seventh of the year, five to Marlins. I want to make it back to back. Brian Anderson, home run the left field. I knew it off the bat. It was gone. Six to two, Miami. And then Jay Bruce hits a sacrifice fly. Harper comes around the score. Six to three. Sean Enriquez hits another sacrifice fly. Hernandez comes around the score. Six to four. 
oh yeah, it doesn't matter because none, none of that matters because we lost the baseball game because it was that ugly because Ellen D. Los Santos can't pitch for crap and he doesn't know how to throw a baseball. That's why, because he doesn't know how to pitch. We're having these anemic pitchers pitch. Pitchers who should not be pitching these kind of situations. You think I felt confident today with D. Los Santos on the mound? You think I felt confident with that guy on the mound? No. No. I don't think so. No. Uh uh-uh. uh. No way, Jose. Absolutely not. I did not feel good with that guy going on the mound today. So let's look at the box score. Harper let off, I think, now four games in a row. He goes one for two. He scores two runs. He gets on base. He walks twice. Guys average up to 248. He's very underrated this year. Everyone keeps saying he's having a terrible season. He has not had a terrible season. Believe me, he, it's, it, people keep saying how – I'm not trying to sugarcoat it. It's, it hasn't been somewhat underachieved, but the RBIs are up and the doubles up and the home runs. I understand the home runs will come. I'm not worried about the home runs as much. It, this is who Price Harper is. Do we remember the 2016 Harper? And then he came back the next year and had an MVP season. So Harper, I understand, you know, we'll get into that later. But you guys know how I feel about him. Hoskins, 0 for 2. He did walk twice. Scott Kingery, 0 for 3. Walked and struck out. Jay Bruce, 0 for 3. Drove in an RBI because of the sacrifice fly. Gene Segura, 1 for 4. Cesar, 2 for 4. And he also, he was, he had, he had a horrible play at second base where he didn't slide. And it could have. Helped us win the baseball game, but he decided to be Mr. Lazy and he didn't want to do his job and he didn't slide. And I don't want to say it cost us the baseball game, but it definitely didn't help. Andrew Knapp, 0 for 3, and his average is now 164. Let's give him a round of applause. 164. That is by far the best catcher in baseball right there. Andrew Knapp, Andrew Knapp man. <laughs> that guy is so good. He, why isn't he on the All-Star team, right? This guy is so good. Why isn't this guy in the All-Star game? <laughs> just watching him hit, I just laugh because he's so bad. He's literally so bad. He's by far probably the worst catcher in baseball, by far. I, you, obviously, you guys know I was being sarcastic there. He is so bad. He is so bad. Oh, my goodness gracious. Like, I said it like three times. He's so bad, like, honestly. Like, I've never seen such a worse hitter. He sucks. JT, Real Muto, 0 for 1. He hasn't gotten a hit since the groin injury he took in, um, I believe it was Atlanta. He went. He didn't even collect a hit in the series. Is that not? D. Los Santos, 0 for 1. Brad Miller, 0 for 1. Sean Arigas obviously got an RBI. Roman Quinn, 0 for 4, 111. He's hitting. He can run, but he can't hit, as I said that before. Oh, let's just put LND Los Santos up there. He goes four innings, seven hits, four and runs, three three uh um walks, two strikeouts, one home run. Wow, what a fantastic performance. That's good enough to win you a ball game, isn't it? No, I don't think so. Garcia, one inning, four hits, two and runs, two home runs. Ranger Suarez, two innings, three hits, one walk, two strikeouts. Alvarez, two innings, two hits, one walk, four strikeouts. And that's your ball game. As we get swept out by the Miami Marlins. I mean, there's not much else to say. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. I don't want to hear the excuse that, oh, they're still a professional baseball team. No excuse. You cannot get swept out by them. You cannot. No. No. You cannot. You cannot get swept out by the Miami Marlins. You cannot get swept out by the Miami Marlins. That is – I don't I don't think you understand how bad that is, guys. Like, that is unacceptable. Well, that's the first time we got swept out of the Marlins at home since 2009. So it's been 10 years. Very, very, very frustrating. I mean, at this point, like, it's just, it's just annoying. Like, can we just get a one win? I mean, like, like it's just so frustrating. Like, I, I just, I, every time I make a video, I talked about this yesterday. It's like, oh well, we lost, we lost. The Phillies lose. The Phillies lose. The Phillies lose. The Phillies lose. Why can't I say they won? I can't. I can't. I haven't said that in over a week. Like, it's just, it's very, very frustrating. 
but again, it's not time to push to panic. I mean, it's maybe some. I mean, I don't. I I want to say it's. I want to say it's time to push the panic button. I also want to stop myself and understand it's only June. And listen, I understand we're only one game above 500 now, but crazy things happen in baseball. And listen, the Mets could get on a tear and make the play. I mean, it, it, it's just the same with the Nationals. The Nationals, like, it's just anything could happen. Anything could happen. I do not want to rule anything out. Okay, so I know there's been a. I can't think of a specific example. But I. Can't tell you how many times teams have – look at the Cubs in 2017. They were a 500 baseball team in the first half of the season. And they turned it on the second half and totally took over the NL Central against the Milwaukee Brewers and won the division. So anything can happen. So I do not want to rule anything out, okay? So I understand they were led by Joe Madden. We're led by Gabe Kapler, who is by far – I did not talk about the Gabe Kapler ejected yesterday. Uh, I, I obviously go back and watch my videos before I upload them uh, and make sure everything was okay. Everything's okay and everything looks good. So um, Gabe Kapler swung out of game yesterday because Scott Kingery uh, swung. He did not swing. His, his, he got hit in the hand, and the umpire said he swung, and Gabe Kapler was cursing and saying profane language and you know, putting the finger in the face and yelling and screaming. He kicked dirt on the umpire. I loved it. I love that. Why can't we see that more? That fires up the team. Obviously, it didn't do it yesterday because we got the L. But that fire that just fires up your squad. I want to see that. Show me that. Show me that fire. Show me that passion. That's what the skipper's supposed to do. Why can't we see more of that, Cap? You're the leader of the team for cry, uh, for uh, crying out loud. Be lead by example. Lead by example. Now, if that's Bryce Harper getting thrown out of the game, then that's a different story. That's not what I want. I don't want Bryce Harper getting thrown out of the ballgame. Okay? No, a couple months ago when he got thrown out. But anyway, that's your ballgame. We uh, lose. So, yeah, 6-4. Six, six to four. That's it. Obviously, that Kapler ejection happened yesterday. So, that did not happen today. But, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'd like to see that more. And he did not swing. He was pointing at the umpire. Said he pointed at every umpire. Said you suck, you suck, you suck. I could hear. I you could. He was mouthing. There's some guy on YouTube, YouTube named Josh. What's his name? John Boys Media or something. But he like, <laughs> like he like investigates the video to see what the person's saying and the umpire and everything. And like he like says about uh, you know what they're saying. So he also doesn't bleep out any of the curse words. So uh, I don't I don't recommend if you. If you're sensitive to that kind of stuff, I don't recommend you watching him because he does not bleep out the curse words. So uh, if you are sensitive to that, I do not recommend that. So, guys, that is uh, pretty much it. Uh, I think the odd, I think my um, video just got glitched out there. I don't know why. I just I see myself, and I think it might have gotten – I apologize for that glitch, guys. Uh, just ignore that. Uh, I haven't seen that happen before. So if it does come up there, I just saw it. So if it does happen – if you guys did see that, I apologize. Uh, not much I could really do about that. So my laptop's about about to die. So I uh, think it might have something to do with it. So guys, we somehow get a win. We got Zach Eflin on the mound tomorrow night, six and seven. We seem to never score when he pitches. Six and five of the two point eight three ERA. Tuesday we have Jake Arian on the mound. Well, well, I forgot to say the, for New York they're going at Stephen Matz, who has a five and five record, four point two eight ERA. Second game is Jake Arrieta, six and six with a four point twelve ERA against Lockett for New York. He is zero and one with a twenty three point one four ERA. And then um, uh, on um, Wednesday it is J- uh, Jason Vargas for the Mets against Nick Pavetta. And then the finale game on Thursday, one of the first pitch, it is Zach Wheeler on the mound for New York. And for the Phils, it's Aaron Nola, and he's coming off a good start when he went eight innings. His fastball was – I forgot to talk about his fastball the other night. It was really, really good. I understand we got the – we lost, but his fastball was really, really effective. He was hitting it with the spots. I saw he was hitting with the four seam, and I like what I saw. Aaron Nola has success when he can command that fastball. So if he can do that, that's that's what he had last year. He's able to command. He has so much potential. And that's what he was having trouble with at the beginning of his career because he was having trouble – commanding his fastball and commanding his other pitches. He was having trouble because he always had potential, but he wasn't able to really 
mold it all together. And last year he figured that out. He was able to command pitches and throw it where he wanted to and command. A lot of bat pitching is command. Can he command it? Can he put it where he wants to? He was able to pinpoint it where he wanted to last year. This year it's been a different story. It almost reminds me of how he was at the beginning of his career when he struggled to kind of pinpoint his pitches. So we saw that out of Aaron Ola on Friday night. Hopefully we see it on Thursday again. One of the first pitch against Zach Wheeler. But most importantly, we're worried about tomorrow when Zach Eflin goes on the mound against Steven Matz. So, uh, like I said, 7-5 to five, the first pitch. Wheeler, um, not Wheeler, it's Matz versus Eflin. I hope everyone who's watching this video has a good night. Thank you for all the subscribers. Thank you for all the likes. Thank you for all the support. Thank you for all the positive feedback. I really appreciate it. Um, I love doing this. And even though we've been losing lately, I'm still keeping a somewhat positive attitude. I'm trying my best. Uh, I hope you guys, um, you know, kind of understand, you know, this is kind of a, of a rough stress. As many, many people say, I mean, I was just listening to Mike Rizzo, the Nationals GM, Mike Rizzo talk. And, you know, he was just saying how there's a lot of ebbs and flows and there's a lot of the season's a marathon. And, you know, he's so right. I mean, I hate the Nationals, but I, I really like Mike Rizzo. I think he's a fantastic person. And from what I've seen about him, like, he's so right. Like, he's, he's so true. So, there's a lot of ebbs and flows. There's a lot of ups and downs. The season's a marathon. So, yeah. And by the way, the Braves, the Nationals blew a huge lead last night. They ended up releasing Trevor Rosenthal. They were up 8-4. to four. They should have won the baseball game, but they blew it. Sounded like us. Sounds like something we do, right? Up 8-4, to four and then we lose. That's what happened to the Nationals. So, I hope you guys all enjoy the rest of your night. Uh, I apologize for not getting this video up. I worked. Uh, on my shed in my backyard, putting on a new roof. And uh, I watched the baseball game somewhat, but I wasn't able to make a video right after the baseball game like I usually do. So um, I had to do it a little bit later. So I hope you guys understand that. So, so I appreciate all the support again, and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.